Hi friends, I hope everyone's doing well. In my last video, I used a section of a page from an old encyclopedia in a collage. As I looked for a page to use, I was reminded of how many encyclopedia pages I have in my stash. I've gone through all the volumes and removed all the pages from the covers, so you can imagine the quantity. So I pulled a small stack of pages to use to create collages in this video. I will not only be using these pages, I'll bring out painted papers and paint to add to the collages as well. It's more in keeping with my style of collage. I don't have any design ideas yet, so I'll go over that in each collage section. I should mention that before I deconstruct or alter a book, I check to make sure it's not valuable. I'd feel awful if I found out it was valuable after I used it. You may want to do the same thing before you use a book in your art practice. With all that said, let's get started. I need to mention that I won't be using all the encyclopedia pages that I pulled. I like having paper options to choose from when creating. For this first collage, I chose this large image of people at the New York Stock Exchange in 1968. Typically, I don't use realistic images in my collages, but this image can be viewed as abstract or pattern once it's cut up. You'll see what I mean once I start collaging. Also, I like that it's large so I can cut multiple elements from it. Since I'll be collaging in my style, I also pulled these monoprinted papers and this bottle of Blake's matte acrylic paint in deep blue light. I pulled papers in light, mid, and dark value. I consider the encyclopedia image as a dark value. I wanted to make sure all three of the values are represented in this collage. I'll be working in my handmade art journal with 60 pound paper. As always, when painting in an art journal, I put paper behind the page I'm working on and the previous page to protect the other pages in the journal. I'm starting by painting a solid ground with deep blue light using a one inch flat brush. Most of the ground will be covered, but I wanted a painted base layer for this collage. Other supplies are a glue stick and scissors, keeping the supplies simple this time. This collage will have a geometric design, so I'm starting by cutting the encyclopedia into three uneven rectangles. The main shapes will be what I call arches and bridges. This first shape is a large arch. The remnant is the bridge. Both elements can be used in a collage. Actually, it's a good idea to use both. It adds variety to the composition. I won't be gluing down these elements quite yet. I need to figure out the composition first. Besides a single arch, I like including bridges that have one or multiple arches cut out. It's another way to add variety to the composition. I could leave the bridges as is so the blue ground will show through. Instead, I'm adding paper to those areas. Since the collage is leaning dark in value at this point, I wanted to start by adding mid to light values. Started with adding the light blue monoprinted paper to the single bridge element. I prefer to cut the paper that will go under the same size as the element. It makes it easier to line up the two elements together when gluing. Continuing to add light values, I'm additioning light orangish yellow papers. This first paper isn't quite tall enough. I prefer the other paper in the same color because it's larger widthwise and lengthwise. I would rather have the paper be too large than very close in size to the element that will be on top of it. I decided that I like the placement of this element, so it's time to glue it down. I 
I'm changing the orientation of this element because it currently mirrors the element that I just glued down. I think it'd be better if it had a left side vertical orientation. The Romanian Cyclopedia element is being left unglued for now. I want to work on the surrounding elements for a bit. This orange dotted paper reads as light value and in a way coordinates with the other shapes. I want to leave a hint of the ground showing next to it. I'm being mindful to leave some of the ground showing. I'm planning on leaving the ground showing as the bridge for the last encyclopedia shape. This lower right area would be awkward looking if I lift it as the ground color, so I'm adding a small element of the light orangish yellow. This element ties in with the element along the upper left side, balancing the composition. I debated about adding the leftover encyclopedia arch to the upper right area. I thought it'd be too similar to the other element with the light blue in the lower left area. I decided it wasn't because I'm adding a different color monoprinted paper underneath it later. This collage needs some of the remaining spaces broken up with different sizes, shapes, and colors. Adding this long, narrow, light blue element will help to define the elements around it. I chose this orange paper because it's mid-tone and value, which is needed. The area next to it needs to be covered. Again, if I lift it as is, it would be an awkward shape. Adding another narrow light blue element will balance the composition. Next, I'll be adding accents on top of the arches. Right now, all of them look a bit plain to me. This small leftover encyclopedia arch fits nicely on top of this light blue arch. I like the look of off-center elements, so I won't be gluing exactly in the middle. The collage needs a bit more dark value elements. I'm cutting arches out of this dark blue monoprinted paper to add on top of the light orangish yellow arches. This dark blue paper ties into the dark blue ground. I'm cutting the elements from different areas of the paper so each one will have a different pattern. It's another detail that I find appealing for collage compositions. Next, I'm adding an orange arch to the large encyclopedia element to break up the heavy looking shape. Also, I think the collage needs another orange element to balance it. There's enough room to add another arch, but a smaller light blue one. And finally, adding a light blue arch on top of this encyclopedia arch. Here's the finished collage. It's a good example of how I incorporate encyclopedia ephemera into my style of collage. Let's go on to the next one. Continuing to work in the same art journal, this time I brought out encyclopedia pages that have text. I won't be using any images this time. Text ephemera fits into my collage style. These are the monoprinted papers that I'll be using. 
I decided not to paint the ground this time. I'll be using the encyclopedia pages with accents of monoprinted papers as the ground layer. The inspiration for this collage is this round text shape. There'll be a total of three circles in this collage. The other two circles will be cut from this text. I brought out this template to draw the circles. I don't necessarily want the circles to be perfect, but I do want them to be round. I thought it'd be interesting if the circles were half encyclopedia text and half monoprinted paper. I'm using the text circles as a guide when cutting the monoprinted paper. Again, I'm not striving for perfect circles. Washi is a good tape to use to secure the papers when cutting. It's strong enough to hold the papers in place, but not too strong that it'll tear the papers when it's removed. I cut a section, then move the piece of washi to secure the cut sections in place. Instead of cutting a straight angle, I thought it'd be a nice detail to cut at a slight angle. I'll do the same steps for the other two circles. I'm holding off on gluing the circles until I get the ground layer glued underneath each one. My plan is that the composition will be mostly encyclopedia text, so the overall collage will be light in value with accents of mid and dark value papers. Also, it'll have a vertical orientation. I'm cutting this paper in uneven widths. I think it's a better design. I'm being mindful of the placement of both the encyclopedia ephemera and the monoprinted papers so there's contrast and that the half circle of encyclopedia ephemera is legible. I'm adding a sliver of this green paper to start to build some color into the collage. Also, this paper will contrast nicely with the dark purple half circle that'll be glued on top of it. Same can be said for this orange paper. As I'm building the ground layer, I will continue to place the circa element on top to see how that area will look. I can make any adjustments before the papers are glued down. I'm adding dark blue next because this paper will be under the encyclopedia half circle. The dark value will contrast with the light value of the half circle. It will help the half circle to be legible instead of blending into the ground. Now that the ground layer in this area is glued, I can glue down the first circle element. Again, I'm gluing each half circle at a slight angle. Next, I'm working on the area underneath the blue and encyclopedia text circle. This next piece of text will work under this area of the blue half circle because there'll be contrast. The section underneath the text circle needs to have some color, so adding a yellow paper will help to define it. The section underneath the text circle needs some color, so I'm adding yellow paper that will help to define it. 
Yellow is considered a light value paper, but in this instance, I would consider it mid-tone, whereas the text is the light value. Also, it helps the composition to have yellow paper smaller than the other paper that's already glued down. Varying the size, shape, and color of elements is a good quality to have for a balanced composition. I started to glue down the circle, then realized that I need to glue another ground paper underneath the blue section. Luckily, it was easy to peel up. Now onto the area underneath the last circle and the whole right side of the collage. I thought at first that another long, narrow element was needed in this area. Then I decided to cut a wider, shorter piece to fit in that space. Also, I needed a different size because most of the glued paper is long and narrow. Once the orange element was glued, I can glue down this final circle. After the last piece of text was glued, I'm coming back in to add some colored paper as accents. Being mindful not to overdo it since I want the collage to be mostly light in value. I tend to create collages that are mostly mid to dark in value, so I wanted to switch it up for this one. Adding a small dark purple element in this area ties into the dark half circle and helps them balance the collage. I'm adding another yellow element to tie in with the existing yellow element. Also, it helps to define the half circle next to it so it doesn't blend into the ground. The scrap of orange paper works in this area that only needs an accent of color. Same can be said with the green scrap of paper in the upper right area. The left side looked a bit plain, so I'm adding a long, narrow, dark purple element. It adds a hint of color and ties in with the other dark purple elements while keeping the overall light feel of the collage. The text half circles looked a bit plain as well, so I decided to add smaller color half circles on top of each one. I'm using the circle template again to figure out the correct size. As I mentioned in the previous collage, I like the look of off-center elements, so I'm placing these half circles in that orientation. Here's the finished collage. The composition is in my style, but the overall light feel of the collage isn't necessarily my style. It was good to work outside my comfort zone. Let's have a final review next. I knew going into this collage session that I wouldn't only use the Encyclopedia Ephemera. I love using monoprinted papers and painted papers in my collages. I like how the image of the people at the New York Stock Exchange turned into a pattern paper. The viewer will have to look very closely at the collage to see the actual image. The color and element placement pull the collage together nicely so it's balanced and cohesive. As I mentioned previously, the composition is in my style, but the overall light feel of the collage isn't necessarily my style. I don't typically create light value collages. I find it good to work slightly outside my comfort zone so I can grow as an artist, but not too far outside as to deviate from my style. I have found a style that I like for now. Of course, I know that it can or actually will change over time. All in all, I'm happy with this collage. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch it. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.